Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Oh, welcome back, everybody. So there is a, a word that gets thrown around a lot these days. What does it really mean? And are you practicing it? And if if you're using the word, are you properly practicing it? And then again, what is the right way to practice it? I'm talking about transparency. A lot of people want to be transparent. They feel that it, it shows them as being more honest and more open. But are you really being transparent? We're going to talk about that today. She's somebody that coaches people all the time with many different challenges in their life. She's a certified life coach, TEDx speaker. She's an emotional freedom technique practitioner. And she's back with us, Michelle Mehta is on the program. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here week after week with you, Steve. And I love the topic of transparency, especially with our season. You know, we have elections coming up mm. and it's not about what side you're on, but what are the leaders telling us? What are the leaders in our organization telling us? What are the family members telling us, right? What are, what are the conversations that's been happening around how you're feeling? What matters to you? And recently I attended a seminar and the leader of the group was, you know, in full transparency, I want to let you know that we were a team of 12 and now we're a team of six. And it was a miscultural fit. And it brings back that question, what's in your culture? Who's mm -hmm. in your culture? How do you create the culture that you want to carry on forward? Because every single minute we're leading on, a, we're creating a legacy and we're leading on to a new legacy. So what is that transparency look like? And people hide out. They shy away because of the fear of judgment, the fear of being inauthentic, the fear of insincerity, the fear of they're not going to understand me, the fear of, you know, one of the fears that I have is no matter what I do, you're never going to understand. So why should I tell you anyways? Hmm. I'm processing that and somebody would not fully understand somebody else because they're not walking in that person's shoes. But I feel that we all have a story and we all learn from those stories. And in the example that you just gave about the, the person talking about the cultural differences, it leaves me wondering what's going on over there. You know, it's almost as if you led us down this road and now you're not telling us anymore. Or, you know, I guess they figure it's a need to know basis and you don't need to know. Why'd you say it in the first place? I don't mean you. I mean, that that person. Why'd you just bring it up? Why why even go there? And then say you're, you're being transparent because I don't feel that's fully transparent. Why'd you open the door if you're not going to fully walk through it? Right. And we do that in our relationships all the time. Hmm. Oh, I'm triggered by something. Somebody asked, what do you trigger? Oh, it's nothing. Never mind. Yeah. Right. We hold ourselves back. And I'm saying, open that door a little wider. Because if authenticity is the number one word searched on Google in 2023, that means we're living in an inauthentic world. Mm -hmm. And if social media is allowing us to put on filters, then what's really here? in front of us what's real and what's an illusion exactly and i don't do politics but even during the debate i felt i needed to fact check doesn't matter who i'm for who anybody's for do you believe them and there are some people their candidate well, no, it's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't go that way. I, I want to prove it to myself. What are the facts? Because I'm a firm believer in the facts don't lie. The facts will set you, you free. If the facts are the facts. That's it. You know, but you take your emotion out of it. You'll always have the facts. You can't, everybody is different on emotion, what they feel, what you feel, I feel the facts are the facts. And if you're going to be transparent, one would think as a political candidate, you're gonna, your facts are going to be legit. Um, 
off the soapbox. Let's move off the politics thing here. Um, how far do you need to go? Well, like, so personally for me, you know, as a person that believes in authenticity and really has grown into being more and more authentic as the day and month and the week progresses is what am I saying and how does it make me feel? And am I in alignment with my mind, heart, body, soul when I say it? Do I feel triggered by the next thing that I'm going to say? You know, am I speaking my truth? Is my heart and my gut expanded or is it constricted? And it has been a difficult road to own that, especially for someone who didn't know what her worth was, especially for someone who had a very low self-esteem and was basically following sheep, knowing that she did not belong there, knowing that she was a duck, she was still following all the sheep and stepping into knowing that I am a duck and I have my own lane. And that has been the journey of full transparency is what mm. stories am I telling myself on a daily basis? And what stories am I sharing with others? Because stories bring people together. That builds instant connection. It brings yes. the emotional aspect. And many times we are operating from a very logical, head place. We drop into our heart where we talk about love. But in the conference, I learned the best way to speak is from your pelvic area. That you, is where the how do you most. Mean? How do you mean? Where you put your two hands right below your belly button. And when you come from that place, you are building instant connection with people. And that is something that I learned in the conference. I is want you to go deeper on that. Is that, you know, <laughs> is that chakra connected? Like, where are we, where, where are we it going? It is chakra connected. It is our solar plexus. It is our solar okay. plexus that That's is chakra connected. And when you come from that place, that place is basically, you know, it's there where our breath goes the deepest. Mm -hmm. And when you go into a really deep breath, you get out of your head. You forget about what you're going to say next. You forget about your bullet points and you focus on the person in front of you. And your tonality also changes because you're taking longer, deeper breaths between the words. And so they made us practice it. And we talked about it. How was your day? That was the question we had to answer. And it was, how was your day from a head perspective, which was a to-do list. I woke up in the morning. I did this. I did this. And today I feel this. Worse is when we did the solar plexus, hands on our belly, deep, long breath. It was more about the emotions. I woke up feeling refreshed, was excited about the day. There was love in the room. There was connection in the room versus that basic to-do list that was presented earlier. And even right now, as I'm speaking to you, my hands are on my stomach, you know, just speaking from that perspective of really getting deeper into knowing that there is life, not just from here, but there's life that's running through in and out of our body. And right now we need connection more than ever because Absolutely. connection builds trust. And transparency comes from trust. Authenticity also comes from trust. And when we have a very low trust factor, how can I believe what you're telling me? How can you believe what I'm, you know, what I'm sharing? I'm a firm believer in you can always spot a phony. So if Absolutely. somebody's not being genuine, you're going to be feeling it from the other person. It's like, hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel connected with them. Even if they seem like they're being transparent, are they really? And you're making me think like in, in doing radio for just a few years of my life, um, I believe I did well and have done well in morning radio. Cause you get to talk more because I was transparent. I believe I was authentic the things I would talk about were real, you know, whether it's my kids, baby being born, situation going on, wh whatever it is. And I would always tell people that, and I worked with one, one woman, a co-host for a bunch of years. It was super successful. And I would tell everybody when they, they would say, yeah, I remember listening to you guys. I would tell them everything was real. Like we didn't make anything out of it. Like, and some of those things were sounded a little outlandish. And sometimes they were like, we're like, really? I'm like, it was all real. 
And people still to the day, and this is years later, still come up to me. I remember when you know, your daughter was born. I remember this and I remember that because I believe it was authentic and transparent and it resonated with them. And my relationship with her in person and also on the air uh, was a very authentic relationship. It was, I describe her as the sister I hated, you know, I love her, but you know, we would go at each other every once in a while and kind of like rib each other. And, but it was real. It was, we weren't making it up, but I think that's what it was being real about what we do. Doesn't for you, when you're transparent, doesn't it feel good? It feels good, especially when, you know, for me, it's like telling the client, like, you know what? No one's ever asked you how you're doing. No one's taken the chance to even ask you how you're feeling. You've been taking care of everybody else. Have you taken a step back and asked yourself what's one thing you've done for yourself that's fun? And the answer is, I've never thought about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I always say, you know, whenever they say, I don't know, I say, what if you did know? Right. And it's just that awareness. And I do this with my family. You know, they're like, you know, they'll always pinpoint me because I know I'm treading a thin line when it came to deciding to be an entrepreneur at the age I decided. And it's been a journey of expanding their horizon of this is why I'm doing the things I'm doing. This is why I'm taking that step and investing in the things that I'm doing, because I need to grow faster. And the reason why I need to grow faster, because I know what my next five years are going to look like. It's not going to, I'm not going to have that time to develop and build because what I'm going to be focusing on developing and building is going to be my family. It's about being that family oriented woman. It's about raising the future of the children and being there for them. I won't have that much time that I can dedicate, right? I'm dedicating like 50 hours just on my business. That 50 hours are going to be split between other categories. And that's why I'm taking the time right now as a single woman to navigate and build all of that up front, right? Which in my, you know, in the traditional immigrant parent lives, oh my God, what are you doing? You know, that's not the path you're supposed to be on. You're supposed to be on this trajectory because that's what they were trained to do. Mm -hmm. That's what they were trained to believe in. And I love that path. However, it's a different path than mine. And being transparent and letting them know, like, let me just be me. Because I'm the best version of myself. I will attract the right clients and the right partner and build a life full of authenticity and transparency for myself. It's a higher level of frequency that we operate. Because but we're out of our head and into our heart. You're doing what you feel is right for you. And exactly. it doesn't get it doesn't get any better than that. It just really doesn't. Nobody knows what you want, what you feel. Um, and I get what you're saying, you know, but we're both single. I've focused more on recently on, on business and things that I feel support me. Uh, what does that mean? There's only so much time in a day. That means it's got to come from other things and other people. And, you know, you have to, you have to, massage it, if you will, adjust it. So it fits, you know, what you want to do. Do you feel Michelle that you see your vision? You yeah. already, you, you, you know what you want, you see it over here and you're working on it now here and you're not worried about how you're going to do it. You're just taking the steps, at, but you're, it's already done. It's already like, you're already talking about, it sounds like a family life, maybe yeah. kids, um, being partnered up or married with somebody. It sounds like, uh, yeah, it's happening. You know, it's, it's down the road, but it's, it's definitely happening. I got it over here and I'm going to grow my business up to here. Um, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now to get here, but I'm, I'm, it's, it, I'm getting there. That's right. it. Period. Does it feel that way? It does. And the only reason why it feels that way is because I work with a team of coaches on a weekly basis that keep reminding me, right? But many of us don't have that support. Many of us are operating with me, myself, and I. And they're just focusing on what's in front of them, looking at their calendar. They're planning the day according to their calendar, how it's you know pre-scheduled appointments or that email that comes through or that meeting. And I'm doing it a little differently. I plan my life based on what I want to accomplish, my intentions for myself, 
And before I go to bed, make sure that the intentions are over and they're completed. And that's because I have a team of support around me, which many of us feel like there's a judgment call. Oh, what will that person think of me? I must be inadequate because I'm working with somebody outside of me. Well, I tell people you're inadequate when you're working with yourself. When you're, you're adequate when you work with somebody outside of yourself, because they can see the blind spots that you cannot see. I think I shared with you, I joined a men's group like five months ago. Exactly. And this is what we do. I had, we had a meeting last night. What's the first thing we do? It's called a check-in. And there's a question. It's a basic, not a basic question, but it may be philosophical based on some of the values that we have and all of that. Um, it's also, how, how are you doing today? How, how are you feeling? One to 10. 10 is... Doesn't get any better than this. One, obviously it is what it is. And if it's below a certain number, then we inspect the person. What's going on? Let's let's talk about that. And just everything you're saying, um, there's commitments every week. What do you what are you committing to? What do you want to accomplish? And then you have a man that is uh assigned to you every week. It's we rotate them. Um, and you do it daily. You do a phone call. Could be 30 seconds, it could be a half hour, could be an hour, whatever you want it to be. And you talk about what, Hey, you know, on mine, it was, I'm, I'm working out four times uh, this week for an hour pop among other things. So when I talk later, I'm going to, I'm going to hear, do you work out today? And I'm going to have to say, no, <laughs> still have six more days. Um, but it's, I'm going to be transparent because all you're doing is not being honest with yourself. I think transparency is part of that too. Being, it is. Being it comes with being yourself. honest with yourself. What are you telling yourself every day? What belief systems are you creating? Are you forming? Are you letting go on a daily basis? Right? If I, I had a belief system that I'm not worth it. So whatever I decided that morning, okay, I'm not worth it means I will not go out and eat because I'm not worth it. I will not wear that outfit because I'm not worth it saying, you know what? I am worthy of it. And this is why here's my trajectory. I said what I was going to do and I did it and I passed. And I feel good enough today, which is why I'm worth. So you're able to reprogram those statements in a heartbeat. Just pay attention to the I am and then the word that follows that am. What are you saying? I am worthy. I'm stupid. I'm strong. I'm confident. I'm not good enough. I'm fat. Those are all belief systems we're creating in a heartbeat. So pay attention to the word that follows after the am. Hmm. I am hot. There you go. Yes. So that's because the air conditioning is not working. Um, what's the, I don't know. I, I'm really curious what you're going to say. You mentioned authentic before. What's the difference between, or how do you define each? Authentic and transparency. I think they go hand in hand. So when I had that seminar leader say, you know, full transparency, we had a cross-cultural misfit. My mind went, what the heck does that even mean? Right. <laughs> right. And you said she was going to be part of our program for 12 months. We've seen her one time. Where did the other 11 months go? We wanted answers. I wanted answers more than importantly. Like, hey, you promised us two calls with her. We got one. When's the second call happening? Right. Is it ever going to happen? Right. And in, as an authentic person that believes in authenticity, that's where my mind went. And immediately we did an exercise and the seminar leader says, you know what my belief system is that I feel I'm insincere. And I was like, wow, 24 hours later, we're talking about transparency before. Next day, we're talking about you feeling insincere. And that's a misfit. Because honesty, authenticity, sincerity, transparency, trust, they all go together. Mm. It's like having a plate full of protein carbs, vegetables, maybe a few sugar items, right? It all is part of a meal. So what are you feeding yourself first? And it is a higher level conversation. It's not the type of conversation you have at the dinner table. These are leaders believing they're visionaries and visionaries have to recreate their dreams over and over again, because that's their job as a visionary. And they have to reprogram their belief systems over and over again. I find it interesting that she said full transparency, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> right? How it's many times is... do we do that? Right? We say something and it's polar opposite. 
but it, it was almost like a a Jedi mind trick making you think it's full transparency. She knew that she needed to deliver some information because somebody is missing. So she labeled it full transparency, but it really wasn't. She wanted everybody to think it was full transparency. I don't even know if it was transparency. We you all know that she wasn't there. Right. You know? Hmm. And you know, paying attention to the words, that's an unconscious level, right? Because 98% of our behaviors are unconscious. So sometimes we're thinking transparency, but we might say lack of transparency. We might be thinking mm. authenticity, but we might come off a little bit more arrogant or a little less confident, right? So it's an unconscious behavior pattern that we're playing with at the same time. I, I'm i getting a, a, a picture here. So authenticity is being honest, is... Really, really delivering what, what is going on. Transparency is how much you share in that, how much you're giving up. Because if she wanted to be fully authentic, she would have shared the full story in her transparency of it. I think we're all transparent. Uh, I'm sorry. We're all, we should all be authentic, true to ourselves, honest, integrity, everything you said, sincerity, all of that. How much of that you give is your transparency, how much you want to share. She wasn't transparent. And I think, again, it was just a mind trick to say full transparency. She was doing the complete opposite of that. Absolutely. You know, that famous phrase, right? To be honest with you. What mm -hmm. were you a second ago? Giving me an opinion? <laughs> yeah. Or flag, honestly speaking. Right. Honestly speaking is another one that we say, honestly speaking, what were you doing a second ago? Right. Were it you lying funny. to me? Right. But these are the words that we play with. It really is true. It's almost like a placeholder when somebody needs to say something. And honestly, it's almost they're thinking, they're thinking how transparent they're going to be. They want to be honest, but how honest, transparent, do they want to be or can they be and i think it's just a it's a placeholder so you can decide where you're going to go with that or make people think that you really are being honest when maybe you are but only maybe 30 percent. or again the need to know basis i don't think you need to know everything about the the culture and the whole you know mismatch misfit and all of that um why do you think people are searching for authenticity like literally Google searches, it's because we're afraid that people aren't authentic or we want to learn how to be. I think people are afraid. They're afraid of what's real now. Mm. You know, and I feel it's been a phenomenon Point. that's been creating since, you know, when we had the 9-11, like what really happened with 9-11, right? Then we had the pandemic, like what's really been happening? We have mm. the experts on television telling us one thing, but then we see our friends next door doing something different. So what's really being stated, what's not being stated. Also, social media has all the different types of filters. You take a photo, you can make it black and white, you can make it this way, that way, you can change your face, add makeup on it, not have add makeup on it, right? So nobody knows what's actually real. Sure. And they're living in this facade of, look at my beautiful life, I'm traveling, but they were traveling two years ago, they just happened to repurpose it. Yeah. Right? And I know somebody who does that. Want... Yeah, <laughs> and we, we have... <laughs> Right. And we have people that are, you know, they're posting things just to let the people know what they're doing. And they assume that all 5,000 of their friends are watching their content, but they're not. Only certain people are watching their content. Right. So it's like, who are you following and why are you following them? It's a question I always ask myself, like, mm -hmm. do I really want to see more of this or no? Right. And a lot of my friends in their 20s were like, oh, my God, I'm so depressed. Everybody around me is getting married. Now everybody around me is getting engaged. Everybody around me is having a baby. I'm nobody. I'm like, who are you following? Because what I'm getting is inspirational quotes, positivity, thought leaders, visionaries that are not talking about the life milestones. So it's asking yourself, who are the people that you're watching? Interesting, Michelle, very interesting point, because... They say that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. You're also the product of what you're looking at on social media. 
whether you know it or not, you're being influenced even subconsciously. If you see the same thing showing up all the time, like if you see all these people getting engaged and married all around you, these are in your feed, you, you might feel inferior, whatever. I, yeah, I'm just getting any example, but it is, it is true. I really, um, I didn't think of it in that, in that regard. And there was one other thing in terms of the authenticity, AI. So what is real? What is not? And there's a place for AI. I've used it, you know, it, it's, it's definitely got, it's a great tool. However, it doesn't mean it's always right. It doesn't always mean it's delivering genuineness. It's a robot. It's not real. It's not human. I really, my prediction is sometime in a period of time, be it a year, whatever it might be, everything is going to go back to or close to realism. Like how many times you just want to talk to a human on the phone instead of trying to go through automated prompts, try, try and explain all of this. Yes, you want to do it in a, a timely fashion and move it along, but you want to talk to a human. Like when does that happen? When I call up my bank and there's been some recent issues and stuff, as soon as I give my account numbers, I just say these three words, representative, 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 and and then one comes on event you know, after about a, you know, 30 seconds or whatever, because I just want to explain it. I, I, I really think it's going to go, it's going to shift back because we're so tired of inauthentic uh, situations and, and, uh, and dealing with automation. What do you think? Absolutely. And I think that's the, the thing that brings all this together is emotions. And yeah. sometimes we feel like when a story, we need to tell all the, the beginning, the middle and the end. And I, I've been told over and over again, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. And what you are basically presenting is the emotions behind the incidents that have happened. And emotions can be explored. And if you want to know the types of emotion, there is an app that I'm not promoting, but I love. It's called How We Feel. Hmm. And it's a free app. And it gives you a plethora of emotions that you can choose from based on how you're feeling. And it's very color-coded and wow. very, very impactful. And you get to journal about why you're choosing that particular emotion or not. And it has just changed my life, <laughs> how we feel. <laughs> I just wrote down because I'm yeah. going to share that. I, I'm, I'm going to I tweak one thing I feel in what you just said. When you're telling a story, I totally agree with you. You want to get to the point. You want to make it impactful. And you said, don't let the facts get in the way. I'm going to say, don't let the details get in the way. Oh, even Cause, better. Because I'm I'm a fan of facts. The facts are the facts. You know, make it make it real. But you don't have to go into so much detail. I don't mean you. I mean just anybody in in telling. Oh, a story. absolutely. I mean facts, details. Right. Sometimes we go down a rabbit hole that we forget why we're even telling the story. And every point has a story, and every story has a point. Sure, sure. Every point has a story, and every story has a point. So paying attention, how much you want to disclose, and whatever you are disclosing from this day on. Make sure that you're in alignment with your core values before you share that story. Absolutely. And be transparent. 100%. It's, and right back to share. Sharing is transparent. It's funny that in, in the group that I'm in, we have one man who takes a lot, great guy, clear speaker too, takes forever to, to say something. And as soon as he starts and time goes on, we're like, laser, 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 get to the point. Uh, how do we connect with you, Michelle? If somebody, like you talked about, you work with people on a coaching level, they've moved your life forward in many regards, it sounds like, and, and you're still doing it. I am. Um, you see, you know, you see the value and it sounds like you learn something all the time, which I love. I, so like, I'm excited for you. Like I feel your vibe, like you <laughs> little things you pick up on along the way. Will you do that for other people? How do we connect with you? You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram at I am Michelle Meta. You can also check out my website at michellemeta.com. And that's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-M-E-H-T-A.com. And the social media handles are at I-A-M-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-M-E-H-T-A. Feel free to shoot me a direct message. Let me know how I can support you in being more transparent 
because Steve, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of things that we talked about today has to do with neuro linguistic programming, which is NLP, because it's all about the words that we choose. Hmm. Now I'm going to think about what I've said today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I love the fact that you walk the walk and talk the talk, you know, even in your website, I am, you know, it's such a definitive statement and you embrace it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It means cool. a lot coming from you. Oh, I love talking with you. I, I can't wait to share this app because I think it's so important. Um, yeah. emotion is everything as well. Uh, thank you so much for being here again today. Thank you so much. And I'll talk soon. Yep. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.